We've talked many times about Jacob Fatu, so there's no sense beating that dead Samoan werewolf. Is there any value, real quick as an aside, do you think there's value to Jacob Fatu beyond his actual talents just because of the relation to Roman Reigns and the bloodline? Yes. I mean, not if you're WWE, if you're AEW. If you're anybody. If you're anybody. The... it, it's written itself already. Here, see that guy walking down the street? He looks like somebody you don't want to f***ing mess with. He's not that tall. He's my height. He's six feet tall. When I was watching him work, I think he's lost a little weight. Last time I saw a clip, he's a little lighter. But he's, is he 250? Is he 270? I don't fucking know. But he not only fucking looks like somebody you don't want to fuck with when he's walking down the street, but then he gets in the ring and does far and away athletic things that you would look at his physique and his build and say, nah, this is a guy that can moonsault and not make it look fucking phony. He's not like Pac, where he has to fucking get up on a top rope and super glue his feet to the fucking turnbuckle for 30 seconds, get his balance. He flies at people. He fucking flips. And again, you know, people are going to say, oh, Cornette's talking about flips. Well, when any trampoline cowboy that weighs 175 pounds can do some, it's one thing. When it's a 260-pound Samoan, and he's got better form, and it comes out of nowhere, but he springs up. He does the moonsault. He's going over in midair. He's going to fucking land on this guy, knee first probably in his face, but he sees that instinctively. And he raised his knee up to the side and boom, and landed perfectly where he didn't hurt the guy. It looked like he killed him. Because when I recorded it on television, I watched it back in slow motion. And you could tell as soon as he was turning over backwards where he could see the guy, he just spread his leg out a little bit. And when I mentioned it to him afterwards, he didn't even know he'd done it. It was just, it was instinctive. But the point I'm making is this thing has has written itself, but nobody will take advantage of it. Solo, for, as good as he is, Solo is in the spot that Jacob Fatu should be in in the WWE as the enforcer, the street fighter, because he looks, Solo looks clean. He's got a nice haircut. He's got clean gear. Fucking Jacob Fatu looks like a goddamn beast. And yeah, I from meeting him and talking to him a few times, I get the feeling he's one of these guys. He probably grew up in a rough neighborhood around some rough people and have probably done some things that people that grow up in those places and know those people have done. But he's not like a goddamn axe murderer or criminal or a lunatic or whatever. He, but he sure comes off as one when he turns it on. And that's the thing. This guy emits animosity and aggression and danger and the sense that he would go into business for himself, even though he's nobody. Because when you got Brock Lesnar, he can still give off the aura that he'll go into business for himself and fuck somebody up just on a whim because he's got fuck you money and he don't give a shit. Well, this guy's on the other end of the fucking spectrum. You can pretty much look at him and say, he ain't got shit that he really gives a fuck about losing, right? This fucking character, so fuck it. He don't care. That's the the aura that you have to have danger with somebody like that. You have to have an aura of danger. So you asked about AEW. Jesus, Mary and Joseph on a fucking but zebra. I didn't ask you about AEW for using him just for what he is. I said yes. specifically about the fact that he's related to the top stars in WWE. Well, yes, but here's the gimmick. Here's the the gimmick for anybody. This is the black sheep of the fucking family, and look at the territory that takes in. When you talk about all the fucking Samoan wrestlers and the island boys, and whether it's the the Anuai family or the fucking uh, b- b- widen it out to the barbarian and the fucking Haku and the legendary lineages and the Samoans and the Peter Maivia, this guy... Is too hot for all of them to touch. The black sheep of the family. Build up the danger about this fucking guy. He's been in jail. He's been in solitary. 
They fucking, well, they wrapped him up in a goddamn straitjacket one time and put him in a rubber room at the puzzle factory when he cleared out a goddamn gang bar. Because the fucking performance that this guy puts on, if it was a straight, I mean a serious presentation of somebody that don't give a fuck and has got nothing to lose and has been overlooked because he was the black sheep of the family and the others don't want a part of him, and he's got, and like I said, if I was ever going to come, which I ain't, manage anybody anymore at all, this is the fucking guy that you could take or any great mouthpiece. And maybe Heyman might not even fit this just because Heyman, besides the fact he's my age, I don't know that I think it needs to be somebody different and somebody new, but that can talk and could get that point across and bring this guy out and say, he will fuck you up. And he's, he really will drink your blood and eat your bones and just flesh that background out in that way. It's not hard to believe there's elements in there of, of truth. If, if the, you know, his, uh, you know, I don't want to say criminal record, but whatever he's got on his record that maybe people, you know, haven't wanted to fucking splurge on him so far. But he's a natural fucking talent. And even more natural, I've seen most of the Samoans since the fucking Samoans. And this guy's more natural in the ring than most of them. <laughs> 